thank you for joining us again for episode number 21 of the Mamas in Progress podcast. We are your hosts, Cecily Rose. And I'm Shelby Renee. And we are two mamas living in LA trying to figure out this hood called motherhood. Out. All day, every day. And how perfect is it that our very first episode of 2021 is episode 21 yes that's hilarious I mean hopefully it's a sign hopefully a really good sign that good things are to come and we just want to thank you guys for rocking with us through 21 episodes and counting and you know it's the new year new year always means resolutions or setting intentions or goal setting or whatever you want to call it but I thought it was funny that I read an article in the New York Times on New Year's Day that said you should actually focus on new year reflection versus resolution so meaning we should reflect back one last time one final time on 2020 and then the year shall not be spoken of again yes I think that's really good because sometimes it's good to just sit back and look back and say okay what lessons did I learn what do I not want to do again okay what were you trying to show me God in 2020 because if you're Mm -hmm. so busy trying to do your vision board for 2021 you might have to repeat the same lesson because you didn't catch it the last time. So that's really good to sit back and because everyone is like, oh yeah, new you, new boo. Everybody's doing their thing. And it's just like, okay, but did you really take stock of last year? So you can move forward smarter and with more, with more resolution, you know what I mean? So that's really good. I like that. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. What do they say? If the, if you don't learn from the past, you're doomed to repeat it. So I think it, I thought it was, it really uh, resonated with me. Cause I was like, okay, that's true. You got to take that time to reflect. Mm-hmm. And like you said, look at what you're going to do differently. But before we get into it, I just want to find out, cause I know how you brought in 2020 cause you were at my house for game night. So how yeah. was your new year's different uh, bringing in 2021? Okay, so 2020, you're right. We were at your house. So much fun. My mom was with us. Yes. That was like just amazing. I felt like I was with my family and my family, you know, mm-hmm. family. And it was an entirely different vibe. This year, of course, we had to stay home and no one was going out. We ordered my favorite, favorite, favorite food, uh, Krabby Crab. So we got garlic crabs from a local um, place here in LA. Their food is delish. And it was so funny. My husband went to go pick up the food and he was like, Cecily, the line was bananas. Like apparently everybody else was like, we're going to get this crabby crab and enjoy. So we turned up the music. We listened to like old school hip hop and new school. And we have this thing where each person in the family gets to pick the next song as a DJ Mm because we all have different types and styles of music. And we just listened to music and ate crabs. It was great. We stayed up until um, past midnight. My son got a a GoPro for Christmas. So he was recording the fireworks because if you're in LA, you already know the fireworks were off glass. And he recorded the, um, the fireworks out the window and we said our prayers and went on to bed. So it was a different vibe. How yeah, about you? Yeah, it was a, similarly, we, because I was like, I'm not cooking. So we ordered Thai food, um, mm-hmm. which, you know, California, we love some Thai food. So we ordered from our favorite Thai restaurant. And then we, I had D nice on one device. And then we wa- actually watched um, Anderson Cooper and Andy Cohen on CNN, which was fun. Yeah. And then we watched Wonder Woman. And then I'll be honest, I was tired, y'all. I did not get much time off work this year, which was also very different. I fell asleep. So me and my three-year-old, we were in bed by 1030. That's okay. So that's I, and I was in a deep sleep. So, you know, the rest of them, they all stayed up and I could kind of hear them cheers. And then the fireworks, like you said, it was like, you know, you Bombs over Baghdad, <laughs> literally. And so I was just like, okay. But once I saw that New York hit, I was like, we good. <laughs> night, night. Yeah. Well, night, night. Good. That's good that you got some rest because I know you, you be working in these streets. So it's good that you got just some time to kind of like turn down and and get some rest. Okay. So I got a question for you. Yeah. Since we're talking about reflecting and looking back at 2020, what is a lesson? Cause I don't want to say, you know, all of them, there should be more than one, but what is a lesson that you learned from 2020 that you're like, yep, I'm taking that straight on up into 2021. 
Mm, yeah, a uh, lesson that I learned is the domestic life ain't for me. Okay, so let's be clear. Yes, I can cook. Yes, I can clean when I absolutely have to. But I, you know, I'm making the most of it, but I would much rather go out, make the bacon and bring it home and fry it up. But uh, well, not necessarily the fry it up part. So the lesson it taught me is like, you know, it's, it's it's been cool and I've learned a lot. I've been very resourceful, but I'm looking forward to the day when we can get back out there and just get back out into the workforce if you've been working from home. Yeah. So you like, I'm not really trying to clean toilets and clean up and mop and cook these foods and uh, and, I, and I don't feel bad about it because that's just it's not for me fam it's not for me and uh, it's not my core competency I'd much rather be closing million dollar deals thanks you know what and that's that's clarity now see that was 2020 <laughs> in clarity that was perspective and it is what it is because it's like why fight the truth if that's who you are that's who you are yeah I I, I didn't get my MBA to scrub toilets I'm sorry I'm, I'm just I mean I will and I can but that's not where I want to really focus my life energy if that makes sense and I don't mean that to throw shade for those who get joy out of it and love being you know more at home that's totally fine but I have oh, to oh, no for me listen there is no joy in cleaning up a toilet from a <laughs> 10 year old who should be able to urinate in the toilet at this point in time there's no joy of cleaning urine from the back of a toilet like I cannot wait until all this is over because you're right like if you can outsource and you're if you're blessed enough to have someone that can clean that toilet for you like you said, you spend that time closing another million dollar deal. I am mad yeah, at it at all. And then, you know, for working moms, we really got the short end of the stick because we were doing both. We were still bringing home the bacon and frying it and cleaning it and everything else. So we were doing double duty, still are doing double duty. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, okay, this, what, what is, what, what is, this is not it. This is not it. So that was my lesson. What, what, what's a lesson you learned in 2020? Oh, wow. That was really good a lesson that I learned in 2020. I mean, I, I want to, I, I don't want to do that either. Like, I don't want to clean toilets. I don't want to have to do that. Um, and I feel like it with a 10 year old, he should be able to really step up and do some of those things. Even if we have someone that comes in and cleans the house or mm -hmm. does those things, my 10 year old needs to step up and at least be responsible for his surroundings. So that was a lot of what we talked about this year is like, nope, you need to clean up. If you're blessed to have your own bathroom, son, you should keep it clean. Let's just start there. How about that? Mm -hmm. So that's a lesson that, that cause you, when you're home, we were home all the time. So it's like, you can't live and work and exercise and play in a dirty environment. So like no. being clean was like a thing for 2020. Like we've got to keep our home life clean. So mm -hmm. what we going to do? Yeah. So yeah, that was something that I really was like, nope, some stuff has got to change. And at 10 years old, there's no more excuses. Right, right. So yeah. now what's something you didn't know this time? So let's flash back to January, 2020. Mm -hmm. What's something that you were just completely clueless about that you know, that you really know about now? Ooh. Okay. At the beginning of last year, I was like, there is no way I can do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. On a weekly basis. Yeah. I don't know what equipment to get. I don't know the mic. Like, I don't know not nam thing about what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. But now that we're a year in and we've got, what, 21 episodes under our, our belt, I feel like I'm starting to understand some things more. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of whatever you put your mind to, your intention to, or you do over and over, you will learn about it. But that was a fear of mine. I was like, this right here? I don't know what's happening. So that would be mine. That was a big one for me. Yeah, I mean, and to that kind of, to that point, I would just say, I didn't realize how much technology touches our lives. I mean, I knew, but I didn't fully know. I mean, y'all, let's just take a moment to think, thank God we have the technology that we have. Imagine if the pandemic had happened pre-internet. Remember when that AOL messenger first came out in the late nineties? Like imagine if 
we didn't have all the streaming services and the gadgets like it yes it's been tough but it would have been so much tougher without yeah. these things and so it really made me grateful for this digital age, you know, everybody would talk about the digital age, but it's like, we really got to uh, thank God for it. Thank God for the technology that has gotten us through yeah, and helped I us mean, to stay connected to one another. Yeah. you. I mean, Zoom or my husband wouldn't have been able to do his job without technology. Yeah. He would have been jobless. Like there's, yeah. you know, people are complaining. I know they think virtual learning is just awful, but it's not homeschool. It really truly right. isn't. We're not getting textbooks out and looking at a chalkboard and trying to do like it's a different type of challenge. But you're right. Um, technology has definitely made an impact on 2020. It would have been so much more worse mm -hmm. if we just had to rely on a good old phone to get right. everything done. A landline. OK, where you're you know, the, remember those old phones where you had to like <laughs> what are they called? Not rotary phones. Is that what yeah, it's is a rotary. I think it's a yeah. rotary. Imagine Look, we don't even that. know. We're like, OK. Imagine when you remember when you had the answer machine was like, leave a message after the beep, you know, like, I mean, it's so thank goodness. And think about the holidays. It would have been so much harder to connect with friends and loved ones without technology. So I just, I, I, I didn't realize just how integral it is and how important it is to our day-to-day -day lives, but thank God for it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hear ye, hear ye. Okay. I got another one. Um, okay, so everyone talks about 2020 being the year of clear vision, the year of perspective, mm -hmm. and it might not have been what you envisioned, but people feel like, you know, you go on Instagram, you go on Facebook, and people are saying, wow, you know, this really was the year of 2020. So I know you're like rolling your eyes, but for you, Shelby, how, what, what, was brought into perspective for you or something that you have a clearer, I guess, vision for? Um, I would say, well, certainly I will say that what I really learned is when it get down to it and the stuff hits the fan, it's me and Jesus. It's me and the Lord. Okay. Ain't nobody else, but me and, 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 and him. Okay. And I'm saying him, cause that's, that's what I say. Um, so it definitely made that even clearer and, you know, I hate to make it cliche, right? The other thing I will say that I learned speaking of vision is that you cannot allow someone else to try to write your vision for you. Mm -hmm. And I know that for the most part, you have people that care about you and they just want to, you know, to give you advice or recommend something. But for me, I really learned that I have to stand in my truth and I have to, um, uh, go forth and, and like if I'm working on a project I need to present it the way I want to present it and they need to understand that that they can share and make recommendations and I appreciate it and suggestions but don't try to force what you think I should be doing on me if that makes sense no that definitely makes sense that makes sense it's like if you have a vision God gave you the vision exactly. and so you might not be able to manifest or, or speak the vision out so somebody else can understand it but they're mm -hmm. not going to understand it because it's not their vision you know mm -hmm. what I mean it's what God has given you and mm -hmm. them giving their commentary on it based on their perspective in life so of course it's going to be different I totally get what you're saying that's yeah. a really good one yeah how about you Okay, look, I don't forgot the question. What was, oh, 2020 clear vision. Yes, clear and vision. And can I just say before, why are you thinking? Yo, yeah. I'm not coming at people, coming for people on Instagram talking about if you, the hustle didn't come out of you in 2020, you ain't got it and all that. Don't, it's not help. You haven't seen those posts? No, who is Girl, doing that? On, on Instagram, like if 2020 didn't bring out the hustle in you, then you ain't got it in you. Or um, if you didn't come out of 2020 with a this or this or this, and the, you know, just don't, don't shame people. It, it was a tough year year y'all we're lucky to yeah. be here. we're just lucky to be here in our right minds and healthy so let's yeah. just put it at that yeah that's oh I know I haven't come across that oh I've seen it a couple times well I mean you like you said if you survive 2020 if your family is still alive and you're healthy you passed it ain't no grades for 2020 there's a pass and there's a fail if you, you, you pass if you're here and you're alive like that's awful. I, I, don't, I don't even know what that's about. Like people shaming you because you didn't come well, up with the hustle. I think people mean well, like they mm -hmm. want to inspire, but I just think you have to be careful because we're so quick to post things and put things mm -hmm. out there, right? And you just don't know what people are going through. So don't I'll kick them while they're down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, no, you can't kick them while you're down. And then everybody's journey is different because you may have been planting seeds all up and through 2020. And guess what? 2021 is about to be hot fire. And they don't even know that. Like you can't just assume because you didn't see their results. And that kind of goes back to the point that you said of like your friends kind of giving commentary to your um, vision. Mm -hmm. You may have been laying all the foundation work in 2020 and they ain't seen the Instagram posts about not nam thing, but you're like, oh no, no, boo. It's all going to hit come 2021. You know what I mean? Girl, you better preach. I mean, it's just like when you have a kid, when you're, when you're pregnant, you may not want to tell anyone until like you're absolutely showing and you have to or maybe not till you have the baby right and it's the same thing it's like god is birthing something within you so it's like we just have to be so careful with our words and how we uh deflect or try to what am i trying to say you know like put our own commentary just commentary on other people yeah exactly it's just that yeah i get it that's a really good one that's okay so what's your answer sorry i went on a whole tangent well, no, that's no, that's good. Okay, what was um, brought into um, perspective? Like, oh my God, 2020. 2020 was just getting my house in order. And when I say getting my house in order, it was just about like getting finances in order, getting organized, getting perspective with my husband and the dreams that I have for my son and my daughter, like just getting everything organized and figuring out, okay, what's going to be important for our family as we move forward. And we had a lot of time to spend with each other, whether we liked it or not. So we had those conversations. And I think in 2020, we had a lot of time to talk about a lot of different things. So it was good. It was a good, I feel like we need to keep still having those conversations, but if 20, if the pandemic hadn't happened, we never would have had the type of conversations that my husband and I would have had, my son and I would have had. So I'm thankful and appreciative for that. And no matter what the future looks like mm-hmm. at the foundation, I want it to be where our family has those like meaningful conversations. You know what I mean? Regardless of what's happening around if that makes any sense yeah absolutely because I feel like before it's so easy to just get in like your routine like okay we do this today we do that everybody's like you know running past each other like you don't really get to fully engage and so it definitely has given people the opportunity to do that you know yeah yeah okay what's the next one I think you're next yes um what's one thing you wish you had done differently in 2020 Ooh, one thing I should have done differently. I don't have anything that I, I can't think of anything that I would have wish I would have done differently because I feel like 2020 was that year where it was like, it was all coming out so fast. It was like a roller coaster. Like I didn't know, girl, I didn't know if I was going to come in I, like the news day on a daily day. basis. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to give myself grace for that one because I felt like I was literally just like having to pivot on a daily basis of what was coming down the pike. Are we doing school? Are we doing homeschool? Is my son going back? Is my husband going back to work? Like, right. you know right. what I mean? What happened? Am I, yeah, yeah, like, okay. Like, oh, should we have a vacation? No, we can't have a vacation. My mom, nope, we're not gonna have her fly out. Like, I just feel like I made it. That's what I did. I, we're here. So I'm gonna give my, myself grace on that one and bow out. What about you? <laughs> That's the cheap no, answer. But- no, I, I, I'm with you. I mean, it was literally like every day. And remember, it's a, at some days it was like hour by hour stuff was changing. It's like, good God, I, just, I need 2021 to, to be the most boring year ever. I'm fine with that. I'm fine yes. being nice and bored. In bored. Um, we didn't talk about the election. We had all the, uh, that going on. Like between the pandemic, out. George Floyd, people dying, social unrest, the pain and agony. Like oh. it was- it so much crazy. on a daily basis. It was a lot. Uh, the one thing I would do differently, though, is uh, I would have bought more stock in March. <laughs> oh, well, you, you I mean, never I, lied. I, I bought some, but uh, the investor in me always wishes I could have bought a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, that would have been good because. Uh, for those who may not follow the financial markets like of course uh when the world turned upside down the stock market took a dive and it was a fire sale on all stocks on everything on etfs you name it and um so those who invested their money invested more money and didn't sell like some people who who did decide to sell 
for their own reasons. Then the stock market recovered and now we're like at an all time high. I mean, who's to say it could crash again? We'll see. It's quite a ride, but it, it was definitely one of those rare opportunities mm-hmm. um, in history to buy stuff at, at such a discount. So I know that's the nerd in me, but that's the only thing I can say. No, that's a really good one. That's a really, really good one. I don't know that 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 will ever happen again. You know, you were right. Well, who knows? I mean, usually, you know, there are crashes like that that happen historically every 10 to 20 years, 10 to 12 years, 10 to 12 years. So we'll see. But again, let's just keep it boring. Let's keep it boring. (laughs) I'm fine. I got enough. I'm good. Like, whatever. (laughs) Okay. What, how would you describe 2020 in three words? Mm hmm. I, I, okay, I'll go first. Okay. I was talking to my husband about this and he was like, you know that the world will never be the same. Mm. And I was like, wow. He's like, I was like, you're right. It won't, it will never be the same in the sense that there are certain like industry pivots that mm-hmm. are probably never going to go back to way what we knew. You know what I mean? Right. And I was like, that's so right. I don't think we realize how much the world changed and how it's going to affect us moving mm-hmm. forward. So those would be mine. Yeah, those would absolutely. be my three words. Mine would be never ending, never ending dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just, I mean, to be continued. <laughs> that's three more. Like, I mean, but it was like one of those things where it was like, you know, the end of the year. Yeah, I was excited for the new year just to have the fresh start. But I'll be honest, I don't feel much different. I'm still exhausted. Mm. I'm still running around here trying to stay away from the Rona. I'm waiting for my vaccine shot. I'm watching the news scared. You know, I'm trying to. You know. Okay, sidebar, sidebar, Shelby. So yeah. I went to a vision board party um, mm. a couple of nights ago. Yeah. And I was really excited about the vision board party because I was like, we're starting new, yeah. rejuvenate, refresh, you know, all those R words. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. yes. And I was like, I was buying into it. I was like, listen, 2020 was a hot A mess. So let's just start anew. Girl, when I tell you that some of the guests on the call were just talking about Rona and talking like about how many people died and it was just, I couldn't, I was like, you know what? Are we going to sit here? Are we going to talk about our vision and how we going to move forward 2021? Are y'all going to remind me of the hell that we just lived back in 2020? So I was a little perturbed and annoyed by that because I was, I really wanted to like turn the page, so to speak. But anyway, that's my rant. I should have put that down at the bottom, but I was beyond annoyed. No, I agree with you. It's like, y'all, but that's why we are getting it out now. Y'all let's move forward. We are not looking back. It is what it is. We made it through. I'm with you. Like that, that's not the place to bring all that, but I guess they just needed to get it off their chest, but that probably yes. wasn't the best place. Yes. I was just annoyed, girl. I was low key in my feelings and I was like, Ugh. but anyway, that's just me. Okay. Last one before we go into um, 2020 and have our last, last like bye child on 2020. Put it to bed. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Put it to bed. Night, night, boo boo. Yes. Um, favorite memory of 2020 what is your oh. favorite favorite memory of yes. the entire year my favorite memory surprisingly is when we had to evacuate our home <laughs> due to the wildfire man so much happened man yes, I remember more that. happened in 2020 than like the past decade yes and me. you had your mommy juice and you were drinking out of like a little kitty cup at the hotel yes but no that 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 wasn't a good day but oh. I, what but I really loved we went to the desert so it ended up being like a impromptu vacation and although it was stressful at the time and I was literally living out of a bag with like three pieces of clothing (laughs) legit uh it was like so much fun I had the best time with my kids we went to the zoo we did all these things and it was just a lot of fun. It really was like looking back on it. That is like one of my happiest times. And I just, I love the desert and it just made me fall in love with it even more. Okay. Where did you go again? Was it like Joshua tree area? Uh, La Quinta. That's my favorite. It's uh deeper. So it's past Palm Springs and um, yeah, La Quinta, La Quinta Cove. That's my spizat. And okay, that's, spot. So that's not near Joshua tree. Um, Joshua tree's on the way, but it's, oh, it's, okay. it's past there. Okay. That's a good memory. And here's the thing. It was like, nobody could travel that time. So it's like, you actually got a chance to like have a vacay, like a nice little stay K vacay in <laughs> yeah, the I mean, middle was, of a pandemic. Yeah. It was not under the best circumstances, but um, I do. And the kids too, like we look back on that 
fondly, even though it was a very hellacious time for us. Yeah, yeah, with the, the fires. God, I forgot. About, see, that's what I'm talking about 2020. I for, completely forgot about the fires because it was so much else going on. Mm-hmm. Thanks for reminding me. I didn't even remember that. Okay, wow. All right, what would be um, the best memory for me in 2020? I would say the best memory would be uh, probably be the game show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, it was the game show. Oh, and, that's cool. Yeah, and just because I couldn't tell anybody for mm-hmm. months, and so I had to yeah. hold on to the secret. So yeah. it made living at home with my family and virtual learning a little bit easier because I knew that this show was coming and I had something to celebrate. Mm-hmm. But that was just something that randomly happened. And I'm glad I took that opportunity. But that was a good memory. I, I don't think that, you know. I don't know when I'll be on a game show again or let alone win something, but that was a great memory. And another one, just an honorable mention was my son and I went parasailing Mm -hmm. and that was just a really cool experience that both of us had. So that gets an honorable mention for sure. And it was like, what do you do for a 10 year old for his birthday in a pandemic? Can't throw a party. You got to be creative. So being thousands of feet up in the air, that's one way to do it. But Mm -hmm. yeah, so that was a good one. Yeah, right, well, 2020, 2020, it's been real. Holla, don't call, don't write, don't text, don't email, don't send for us. No. We're done with you. Bye, Honestly, like when I talk, when I'm old and reflected, I'm going to go from 2019 to 2021. <laughs> I'm not even going to talk about 2020 because I'm traumatized, y'all. I, you know, it's going to take me years of therapy and Reiki and some yoga <laughs> to <laughs> to get through this because it was it was I, tough I literally have PTSD like I don't want to see nothing with 20 like my husband's trying to show me something that said 2020 I was like uh, no nah. I don't even nope I don't even want to see the numbers I don't want anybody to give me anything from 2020 don't send it to me bad juju <laughs> <laughs> I feel you 2020 was rough that was a hot it was a hot juicy mess Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, so our final rants of 2021, you kind of gave, that was your rant. That was your rant. That was my rant. Bye girl. Yeah. Bye girl. 20. I I can't even. Yeah. I'm right there with you. The year that shall not be named ever again. Bye. Okay. So let's, let's move on. We're moving forward. Now let's set our intentions for 2021. Yes. Um, well, my intentions are to get this vaccine and get up in these streets. That's my (laughs) intention. So I'm just going to keep it. (laughs) Look, I'm still, we're still inside in California. I don't even know what's happening in the rest of the country. It looks like y'all are living your best lives. I look on Instagram. I look on TV. Y'all are out there living it up here in Cali. We are shut down. So my intention is to get back out on these streets and I'm going to do what I got to do. So you are excited and ready to take the vaccine. I am a thousand percent excited to take the vaccine. I'll be very candid. I know people that work, I work with some of the people that make one of the vaccinations. I trust them. Um, I trust what what they're telling us. I trust the scientists. Um, I know people who have taken the vaccine. Shout out to my girl, Hannah. She's actually in Israel. Yes, today. I saw it on her IG. Talk about jealous. I was like, I knew I should have gone to Israel with her. They, it's so smooth there. She sent me a picture. They have like t- these really nice tents set up mm-hmm. outdoors, like at a park. You go online or on your phone, you make an, an appointment, you go in, easy peasy. None of the really? drama we're dealing with here. Of course, of course None not. Of it. So it's so, like, I just hope that I, we can get to that level. I had to see I'm my dumb, but I thought that she was back in the States getting the mm-hmm. shot because I saw it on IG. I had no idea that she's over in Israel, oh, of course. Israel. And I do know people here who've gotten it. My mom, some of her friends have gotten it, Black uh, senior citizens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know people of all races who have gotten it. And absolutely, I'll be first in line. Mm, okay. Okay. No, that's good to hear because I only know about one or two people in my circle that have gotten it. So I'm always anxious to hear. Um, you know, what other people's experiences has been like. I know quite a bit of people that are still suffering from um, the coronavirus back in Florida, but so that's good to hear. Yeah, that's good to hear for sure. Good to hear. Okay. So those are my intentions to get back out in these streets. Okay, how about you? How about you? (laughs) 
<laughs> well, you already know I'm about the street life. So that's a given. You know, I'm ready to get back out in the streets. One of my um, intentions, and I heard someone speaking about this who I really um, admire, is they were talking about like preparing your garden. Like, what does it mean to prepare your garden? And it kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier, like the people that are shaming the people mm-hmm. in 2020 about not having their hustle on or their business on or whatever they got going on. And it's like, no, wherever you are or whatever you're working on, water your garden. So like when you think about a garden, first you got to clear out the mess. You got to get out the weeds. You got to get out all the stuff. So it's like clearing out, cleaning out, decluttering. And that works for me because I'm like, yes, what do I need to clear out emotionally, physically, spiritually that might be holding me back from this garden growing it? And then you got to water it. And so it's like, okay, Cecily, what is, where am I getting, um, nourishment like what's going to nourish me or this new business or this new pr- project that I'm working on mm-hmm. so that's my intention to just water my garden so if I've got a lot of little baby gardens going on I put my little seed deep down into the earth and I've got to water it and nurture it and put it in a space where it can grow so I know that was real like artsy fartsy and out there but that's my intention on a lot of things when it comes to my marriage my children child we're gonna be watering over here we need a a nice clean garden we gotta pick these weeds out get rid of these naysayers with the bugs like it's a whole it's the whole metaphor that I got going on over here but it makes sense in my mind I think it's very beautiful and wholesome it ain't like (laughs) that over here I'm trying to get after it I have a year of partying pent up in me okay it's about to be mama's gone wild up over here so but wait though I didn't say I wasn't gonna be partying hopefully I'll be your plus one I'm just saying I'm gonna be partying too now but I'm just saying just like for other things I definitely want to ward in the garden but you know girl look I got some outfits right now on deck that yes. I'm like, I can't wait to bust out and put on. Like, I'm like, I don't put out my work. I mean, I'm going to work, obviously, but, and I think it's great what you're doing. I'm not hating. I'm just letting you know, honey, don't check for me because I ain't going to be watering nothing but some drinks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you like, I need to part. You know, the day parties in LA are about to be lit. But here's the thing they're talking about August, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. You're like, I'll save that outfit till August. Okay. I'll be ready to go come August. Okay, y'all. I'm going to be re- ready oh. to go. I can water the garden till August. Yes. Yes. Okay. What's another one? We've got some um, more. What are some uh, other things you want to? Oh, I do You're like, what did I write uh, down? Let's see. I, you know, I definitely want to, I've learned that I need to just be still. Like I don't have to always rip and run and and go to five events. And I, some days I can just have days where it's just like sit down somewhere, just sit down. I don't always have to be booked and busy. Um, so that's something that I want to, that's what I actually want to bring with me from 2020. It's just like taking that time to just shut it all the way down when I need to. Mm, that's good. Yeah. And that, yeah, shutting it down. Cause then that's going to help you be more productive when you do get back to, you know, doing and your help thing. Me party. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, I need to be real relaxed. So when I party, yes. I'll be ready. Well, next week, I know we have a um, someone that a mom boss that's coming on to talk about yoga and meditation. So mm-hmm. that'll be a good discussion where we can talk about what it means to calm down, slow down as a mom. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited yes. for that conversation. Yes. Yes, Sidebar. Thank you. yes for sure. Um, yes. Okay. So, you know, I'm always talking about hustle for your last name, not just your first, Mm -hmm. you know, that's like my little slogan. So Mm -hmm. I want to continue to do that in 2021. Mm -hmm. Um, just hustling for my family as well. And I think that just makes me think of legacy and purpose and all those big grandiose words, but it just puts things in perspective for me when I remind myself to hustle for my last name and not just my first. Yeah. That's a really good uh, thing to always remind yourself right keep things in perspective yeah just because I mean like there's some things that I just like you know what I'm done I don't want to I don't want to work no more on this project or I don't want to flower this garden or whatever but then I start thinking about like my children and what kind of legacy I want to leave for them and then sometimes that'll give me that extra little boost to go ahead and finish what I need to finish or do what I need to do so well, yeah. these kids over here, I was like, keep it up. Y'all getting out the trust. But anyway, 
because I mean, <laughs> they're getting someone. I'm like, oh my goodness, I am putting myself through all of this. Mm. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But yes, I agree with you 100%. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. What What else are we going to talk about? Look at us. We're like, we're looking at our notes. If you're watching us on YouTube, you're like, they keep looking to the side. That's because we have to write notes. We have bad memories and we're mamas we're in progress. Brains. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm not going to even sit up here and like, yes, I am looking at some notes so that I can, not to mention I have my mommy juice in my mamas in progress mug. So uh, yes, I'm, I'm definitely checking my notes but I mean I I'll be honest this is one of the first years because I think I went into 2020 with all these big grandiose plans and all this I'm gonna do this and all these intentions and I and hello we see how that turned out I mean still had wins and successes and like you said pivot 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 but I think I'm just taking a different approach this year like I know the things that I'm super passionate about I'm continue to pursue those with all my might and uh, with all the conviction that I have, but I'm not like setting any uh, specific, um, I don't want to say goals, but I'm not like holding myself to like these certain things that I need to check off of a list. Yeah. I, if, if anyone has heard me talk, uh, like you heard me talk, I have a, a, a 10 year vision. So for me, it's, I already did that work to make sure that I'm on track with my team vision, which I started last year mm -hmm. and I made adjustments to that at the end of 2020. And so I know that I'm on that path. So I don't, I, I, it's a little bit, my approach is a little different. Well, that's really good. Cause I, I, I don't know that I, there's a book that like, it's um called like, where do you see yourself in five years? But mm -hmm. I don't know that I've spent a lot of time thinking about what my life is going to look like 10 years from now, a whole mm -hmm. decade. So just that change of thought to think mm -hmm. about a decade out, I'm sure that does change your perspective. Cause you know, usually most people are like, okay, new you, new boo, do, 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 do. Right. And, and from <laughs> year to year, but some things in life take years to manifest. Absolutely. And it's like, when you're talking about building legacy and that long-term wealth or long-term changes, 365 is not enough time. Yes. There's things you need to do now to mm -hmm. make sure that you're on track. So for me, you know, the approach is a little bit different because I, I, I'm looking, my, I'm looking 2030, here we come. Mm, that's good. That's a really good one. Well, hopefully other mamas in progress will, will meditate on that. I, I know that I need to probably think like longer. I mean, you know, than just one year, you know what I mean? Cause you're so right. Like but the other side of that is too, like, I'm trying to think, where was my mind at the beginning of 2020? It changes. Yeah. Yeah. Changes. So that's why, like, at the end of 2020, I revisited my vision, my 10 year vision. Mm -hmm. And then I made, so the goal is still the same. Mm -hmm. It's just that the hustle looks a little different. So, okay. So did you do like a vision board or yeah. do you write down? Cause everybody's got their own little way in which yeah. they, cause I mean, like, let's be real. Everybody makes goals. I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people make goals and then child by February 3rd is all lies and they ain't changed right. nothing or they fell off or life happened or whatever. But like, how did you get the goals of 2030 in your mind? Do you write them down or what do you do? Yeah, for me, I'm a visual person. So I actually have a physical vision board. Some people like to do it on the computer or a digital version. I have an actual physical board um, and it's broken up into different quadrants. So one is like spiritual, one is mm -hmm. like a career, one is finances and one is like personal life. So, you know, I think it just, like you say, it really depends on the person. I think also people give up because again, when you talk about that one year, if, if it's not a realistic goal to reach in a year, then you're, you're not likely to stick with it. But if you yeah. can look ahead and say, okay, it, it may take me till 2025, but this is what I need to do in 2021 to make sure that I'm on track for that. And I think as moms and as, you know, it's different when you're younger, right? You can kind of mm -hmm. check things off a little faster and now we're we're this is the the long game the end game mm -hmm. you know like this is where it gets tough and so having that long-term vision but you don't want it to be overwhelming it's not meant to be overwhelming it's actually yeah. meant to give you more peace yeah I could see where if you're looking at your life in a decade as opposed to what am I going to do this year and what am I going to do that year that does take the pressure off of having to like perform because you're right you can have all the great intentions 
and then life happens with these kids and or you, just or the economy like look yeah. at how many people lost jobs or had to take pay cuts so it's like if you start measuring well i didn't get this or i didn't buy this house or i didn't do that in 2020 i'm a failure oh i fail you know like that can really you can start to beat yourself up with the negative talk mm -hmm. yeah 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 and nobody saw 2020 coming um the way in which we thought that it was going to come come down like now there are lessons in it like you said because i mean you have to definitely have those checkpoints you know whether they're mm -hmm. quarterly annually biannually you know so i definitely agree with you that you have to have some accountability for yourself right mm -hmm. um but maybe it's just kind of i like to work backwards so i like to look ahead 10 years and then work mm -hmm. backwards from there that's really good. Well, I'm I'm really moved by that because I would love to do a vision board for like what the next 10 years are going to look like. This is a rant since we mama rant. I think I spoke about this earlier, but I these whole vision board parties are just I'm I'm done. And let me tell you why. This is my rant. One, <laughs> people are on the Zooms and they're talking about like they're talking about stuff that you don't want to talk about. And I feel like when you're doing your vision board, it's so personal and it's a lot of it's a it's a very spiritual, mental, physical process. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do this with friends anymore. Because like you, to your point, when you were talking about how you did something and you're here come the friends trying to tell you about your vision and what you need to do, you might not want to hear all that yapping while you're doing your little vision board party. You know what I mean? So, because I, I had one a couple of days. I don't know if I'm repeating myself, but oh well. But um, I was doing the vision board party and I was so distracted by what the other moms were saying. And it was well-meaning, you know, that's their journey where they were at. But I was like, I cannot deal and focus on what I need to for my vision here and then yap about stuff. So I think the next time I do a vision um, board and I would love to just think about one 10 years out, but doing it by myself yes. because listen, they were just, it was just too much. So anyway, that was my rant. I don't know if anybody else feels that way about vision board parties, but that's me. Yeah. And I think, and I mean, and you're allowed to feel that way, you know, yeah. I, I, we just all have to find what works for us. And, you know, maybe it's like you do your real vision board with yourself. And then for those particular like events, you, you know, show up and it's more of like a social thing versus mm -hmm. like, you know, I, you know, just a thought. Yeah, but, no, cause that's good. Cause listen, I came in with my markers and my pens and my right, scissors like, and I was ready to go. Okay. Yeah. And they're up there sipping on their champagne kiki. And I was like, uh, uh write but the vision and like make it plain. Said, it's like, cause if you're not, if people, if the, if the space, the setting, the atmosphere is not conducive is it, it, it that's just not gonna be the most beneficial or productive uh vision board session for you it just yeah. isn't you know so it's you know I don't yeah. know all right that's my rant sorry um but that's good I like the whole idea of thinking in decades as opposed to 365 mm -hmm. um what's a rant or a win that you have and then we'll we'll I guess we'll close it out I don't know yeah so I'll say going back to just like manifesting and working on things in 2020 I launched my website I'm so excited yes 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 yes, yes, yes. work in progress I mean you know and then I'm yes. sure some of you guys out there may also know I'm super passionate about closing the wealth gap and just uh, in, in financial empowerment um, for moms and people of color and any underserved community. And there are a lot of great voices out there and I'm just here to add to it. And so yes. I launched uh, mamaswithassets.com and um, I'm just, again, just excited to see like how I, it, it literally is a passion of mine. So um, we'll see how that evolves, like how that goes, but I'm just excited that it's live. My baby's out there in the world and continue to just work on it and see where the journey takes me. Yes. Huge, huge, huge. Congratulations. I remember when you were like thinking about it and, and, and working it and, you know, doing your thing with it. So it's amazing just to see it up and running and maybe we can, maybe I can interview you one day on oh, mama's in progress and you can talk about that platform because it's so needed, like so, so needed. I know so many moms are going to be inspired and blessed and lives will be transformed with that platform. Like I already know that's going to happen. 
um, because that's such a gift that you have. And I just can't wait to, uh, to see how other people respond to it because I've known and seen that over the years, you know, you helping moms with um, financial literacy and financial goals and just that whole platform. So maybe we can do a show around that so you can talk to, um, you know, the Mamas in Progress folks about mamas with assets because yeah. hopefully in 2021 we all come up with a little, some little bit of coins just a little just a yes. little or a lot yes yes Back a little. 2021 hey yes <laughs> and you are a mom boss so we definitely need to have you, you? <laughs> yes so we can have that as part of the mom boss series i would love that the website is amazing and um i hope that everybody gets a chance to check it out i love the color scheme and all the things that you have. And I'm excited to hear about the mastermind and all the other things that you've got going on um, with Mamas with Assets. Yes, and I'm the excited. shirt. Can I plug the shirt? Am I saying too much? Oh, yes. No, it's okay. It's okay. okay yes. And there's just a really, really cute, cute shirt that um, that I love that, that Shelby has. Is that on the website too? Not yet. So okay. everything is slowly rolling out. So we'll see, you know, just testing different things. And I think yeah. it's okay. Like I said, I think, yes, you can have a business plan. Yes, you can have the, all these things and that's great. But I think it's good to try different things and try new yeah. things, as you know. So um, as one of my children is screaming his head off, but, um, and shout out to you for coming up with the name. So I have to give you credit <laughs> in front of everyone. So Mamas with Assets, I was struggling for a name and Cecily is the person who came up with the name. So yes, thank you. You're welcome. Well, I'm so excited about all that 2021 has to offer. And I'm going to stay in the land of hopefulness and positivity. Mm -hmm. And I know that it might be a year of pivot because 2020 was definitely a year. Oops, sorry. That other year, last year mm -hmm. was, um, it taught us how to pivot. And, um, you know, we may have to pivot some more in 2021, but I feel like our pivot muscle has been exercised and we might be a little bit more ready for those those quick pivots. So mm -hmm. shout out to all the moms in progress who are pivoting and- um, And just yeah. maintaining, maintaining. Maintaining. Yes. yes. Care of Maintain. And be well. Yes, be well and um, turn down the noise on these vision parties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. So I hope whatever you are, you know, wherever you are, you're listening to this, even if it's in June or July and you're listening to this, that you were like, yeah, it's June of 2021 and I need to revisit what I want to do for the rest of the year. We are allowed to do that. Moms are allowed to revisit their dreams, ideas, intentions at any given moment. So that's the beauty and power of, um, of being a boss, of being a mama in progress. So yeah. Absolutely. So with that said, guys, make sure, you know, we've got good things coming up this year. Again, we just want to thank you for being here, for supporting us for a year. And uh, we're excited for what's to come. So make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Mamas in Progress. You can watch us on YouTube at Black Oak TV. You can send us a note at Mamas with Oh, mama's in progress at gmail.com. Sorry, y'all. It's the mommy juice talking. All right. <laughs> we out. Mama's out. <laughs>